NZXT is out with the second generation of its gaming peripherals. We have the Function 2 Mini TKL, and we also have two new Lyft mice, the Sim and Ergo. They've taken some feedback from the first generation and honed their offerings, but it's still a very competitive market when it comes to gaming peripherals, and there are a lot of companies that have been doing it for a long time. So will they stand out in this competitive market? Well, let's dive in and check them out. Hey everybody, I'm Jordan with 9to5toys. For a quick overview, there are two different versions of the Function 2. There is a full size, and then there is the Mini TKL, which is what we have here. Over on the mouse side, we do have the lightweight Lift 2 Sim, and also, brand new, the Lift 2 Ergo. So a little bit of a different shape here. Now across all of these things, you know, speed is the name of the game. They're using optical switches, up to 8,000 hertz polling rate in the keyboard, and also in the mice, you know, trying to make them lightweight, and so we'll dive in and take a look at them and we're going to start with taking a look at the Function 2 Mini TKL. Starting with pricing, the full size comes in at $140 and this Mini TKL is coming in at $130. They do come in either black or the white colorway that we have here. So talking about the Mini TKL, this is the second generation and design-wise it is very similar to the first. You know, it still has that kind of 80% compact TKL layout. So you're getting all of the function keys, you know, everything that doesn't have the numpad on it, but it's condensed into a keyboard that's only one row wider than what like a 75% keyboard would be. So you have tons of navigation built into this, but it's in a very small form factor. And, you know, relatively speaking, it's pretty clean for a gaming keyboard. It's a small case, you know, there aren't big bezels on the side or anything, it's pretty slim. And also, it's pretty clean looking around. There are some buttons on the left side here and also the control knob, the roller here, which has a little bit more resistance in this generation, which makes it feel a little bit better. These keys on the left control a mute for your audio. It also has a Windows lock if you wanna enable that for gaming so you don't accidentally hit your Windows key. You can also control the brightness. On the front of the keyboard here is a USB-C port. Nothing over on the right side. On the bottom, you can see we have two stage feet to adjust the angle. And talking a little bit more about the size of this thing, you know, I've dabbled with 60 and 65% keyboards and they are nice because they're small and save space on your desktop. But at the same time, depending on the game you're playing, having the F keys up here can be pretty crucial. But at the same time, you know, even TKLs can be quite a bit wider with those navigation keys off to the side. So having all that functionality, you know, crammed into this like 80% layout here is pretty awesome. I also play a lot of FPS games and use a low DPI, so having something that's smaller means that I have more room for my right hand for mouse movements, which, you know, I also think is pretty critical. And of course, it has per-key RGB on here as well. It looks nice and bright, it's pretty brilliant. Because it doesn't have the raised sides, you can really see that RGB shining through here pretty brightly. NZXT has made some very interesting choices with these keyboards with the Function 2 because it's hot swappable, but it's using optical switches, which is different than the standard three or five pin mechanical switch that you find in most hot swappable keyboards. So while you can swap out the switches and they even send you along a couple different um, examples of two different um, actuation forces, if you wanna try those, you are severely limited in the options that are available compared to the standard design of hot swappable switch. And while the design looks very similar to the first generation, there have been some updates made to the Function 2. Really, it's all about improving the typing sound and feel. Function 2 has two layers of sound dampening foam, 
a tape mod on the PCB, which also further reduces the hollow sound, and plate-mounted stabilizers. Double Shot PBT keycaps also help to elevate the typing sound and feel. On the white variant, the top plate is susceptible to scratching when changing switches, and unfortunately, it's pretty hard to avoid making marks when swapping switches out. The Function 2 Mini TKL is a little bit more difficult to take apart than some of the competition, like the Corsair K65 Plus. Two of the screws are hidden underneath one of the rubber feet, and some of the connectors are held in place with glue, and the cables are just a little bit shorter in general. With the keyboard opened up though, it's easy to see those two layers of foam and the tape mod. There was more foam inside of the K65 Plus, and it appeared to be of a higher quality and a higher density, but at $160, that keyboard is also quite a bit more expensive than the $130 Function 2 Mini TKO. So where things start to get really interesting with this keyboard is with that choice for hot swap optical switches. NZXT calls them their swift switches, but inspecting the housing clearly indicates that they are Gateron switches. Like we mentioned, typical mechanical switches that you'll see in custom keyboards everywhere have a three or five pin design, and there are just countless variants available for those. And there are mods that you can do to them to make them better and change up the sound and the feel. And that's what makes these hot swap keyboards so appealing is my, in my mind is that you can just constantly tweak and play around with different settings and change things to see and experiment to see how different things, you know, how they actually change up the sound and feel a little bit, but you are severely limited in your choices when it comes to these optical switches here. Checking out Gateron's website, there is a section for the KS22 optical switches, which look very similar to NZXT's. So my guess would be that NZXT had Gateron make these with a white housing for this Swift line. There are a handful of linear options, one tactile and one clicky variant. If you want to get an idea of what some different switches can do, they send a couple different examples of what some different actuation forces feel like. So it comes with the purples in here, which are pretty light, and you have yellow, and you also have a red. My only gripe with light linear switches is that I find myself accidentally hitting buttons when I am gaming if I'm just resting my hand on them. So having something that is a heavier actuation force might be something that would help alleviate that for me, but that's typically why I gravitate towards tactile switches because I feel like that's not as common with a tactile switch. Like I can actually tell when I'm pressing a button a little bit more than just resting my hand on it and it, you know, accidentally pressing the button. But because this keyboard is all about speed, optical switches are generally faster. You know, that's why they went with these instead of the standard mechanical switch. That's why I see optical switches in like the Razer Huntsman line and some other, you know, high-end top-tier gaming keyboards as well. So altogether in use, the NZXT Function 2 is a much better typing experience than the first generation. It still lags behind some of that more expensive competition with solid offerings from Corsair and the K65 Plus or the Razer Black Widow V4, 75%, but the more affordable price point and the unique compact TKL design make it stand out a bit. Keychron also has a solid TKL option that comes in at just under $100, but it is much larger than this compact NZXT board. These days, my gaming is a bit more casual with primary games being like Battlefield 2042 and Helldivers 2. I wouldn't consider myself a top tier gamer, and I don't necessarily find the benefit of going all in on high performance, maximum speed with these optical switches and crazy high polling rates. I'd prefer to have something that is hot swappable, but is open to the wider range of switches that the standard mechanical lines have. Just recently, I discovered the Gateron Baby Kangaroo 2.0 tactile switches, thanks to a viewer on one of our live streams, and they have brought a whole new life to my current keyboard. And moving on, let's talk about the Lift 2 mice. We have the Sim and we have the Ergo. And once again, the name of the game here is speed, but also affordability. They're both coming in at $50. They have a 26K DPI sensor. They're relatively lightweight. And then they also go up to 8,000 Hertz polling rate. From the top, you can see here that they do have a solid shell, but flipping it over, you can see where they're making some of those sacrifices for weight savings. They've cut out a lot of the bottom here. Both mice also feature a texture on the side here that's supposed to help with grip. Uh, in my experience, it didn't necessarily help that much. My hand actually felt looser on this than it did on, you know, kind of the stock shell of the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro. And I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on these mice, uh, but let's talk about the Ergo, which I can, uh, Kind of, yes, it's not a symmetrical mouse, but at the same time, it's not much of an ergo mouse either. It's long, but not very tall. To me, the benefit of an ergo mouse is that it is large and comfortable and I can rest some of my palm on the back. And that's not really the case with the Lyft Ergo 2. 
It measures 128.4 millimeters long, 65.1 millimeters wide, and 41.4 millimeters tall. For comparison, my favorite Ergo gaming mouse, the Death Adder V3 Pro, measures 128 millimeters long by 68 millimeters wide and 44 millimeters tall. So yes, it has an Ergo shape. You can see that it's sloping up on the left side, but it's not quite as much as what I actually look for in an Ergo mouse. It doesn't really see, to me, it doesn't really see the benefit of what an Ergo mouse can deliver. Now, otherwise, it's a simple, you know, five button mouse. You've got mouse one, mouse two. Mouse clicks feel, actually, they feel really, really good. Uh, there's a decent amount of travel, but it's nothing too crazy. Easy to use in game. The scroll wheel feels relatively light, but it's not too light. Once again, I have no issues with the scroll wheel. There is a DPI button on here. The side buttons are pretty pronounced. They're not hard to push and they're in a pretty good place here on the side. So I feel like that those are actually done pretty well. And the Lift 2 Ergo is weighing in at 61 grams. All right, taking a look at the SIM, as you would, you know, as its name would suggest, is a symmetrical mouse. Light weight at 58 grams. Easy, simple five button layout, and the shape is very similar to what you would find in like a Razer Viper. It's measuring 126.8 millimeters long, 67 millimeters wide, and 38 millimeters tall. At just $50, you know, I do see the benefit of something like this. With its high polling rate, it's a 26K DPI sensor, nice switches. Once again, it has a nice light feel on the side buttons as well. The switches feel nice and the scroll wheel feels good as well. But when it came to actually using these mice, you know, I did bust them out and I was trying them live on stream, playing some Battlefield 2042, and I had to adjust the DPI. Usually I run at 400 DPI on the Razer mouse. And then I also tried that on here, but I had to dial it down to between 300 and 350 is what I was playing with to get a similar sensitivity feel. Additionally, I didn't really care for the cable, you know? I think some other companies have better cables like Razer and even Glorious. Even when I was using a mouse bungee, I felt like I could still feel this cable quite a bit when I was gaming, which was unfortunate, you know? And with those things combined, some viewers on the stream, you know, even noticed that I wasn't necessarily performing as well as I usually do with the Razer Death Adder. So the sensitivity and the cable were kind of, you know, making, having an effect on my gaming experience. So while the Lift 2 Ergo is very affordable at $50, if you're you you know if you're on a tight budget, you can still get the Death Adder V3, the wired version for just a little bit more. Usually it's $70, I think it's actually on sale right now for $60, I'll put a link down in the description. And for me, that is just better pretty much in every way possible. For just $10 more, I would absolutely go for that over this. For the Lift 2 Sim though, you know, it is $50, it has that great shape. Yeah, it still has some of the issues with like the cable and the sensitivity might be a little bit off compared to some other mice that you use, but it is a good option if you're really into that symmetrical shape. The Sim makes a little bit more sense to me than the Ergo does. So overall, you know, talking about all these new peripherals, it still feels like NZXT is finding their way a little bit in this market. I do think that the Mini TKL is pretty interesting with this layout. I don't think there's much else like that. So you can get all the functionality of a TKL just compact, one row wider than a 75%, which could be pretty appealing for someone who wants something that's compact on their desk. I know that it's focused on speed and performance for gaming, but personally, I would prefer to go back to the mechanical switch, the three or five pin from what the uh, original one had and is a lot more common in hot swap keyboards. And on the mouse side of things, I really think they need to work on their cables. And I do think that the shape of the Ergo needs to be refined as well, at least for what I'm looking for with an Ergo mouse. And that'll do it for our review of the new Function 2 and the Lift 2 mice from NZXT. I've linked down to everything in the description if you wanna check any of them out. If you wanna watch some other videos, I will link to our review of the Corsair K65 Plus that we just did, as well as our most recent video. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so others can find it easier and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5Toys. to